First question will come from Greg Amon. I know it's just uh, practices, so you only do so much, but to have uh, what was the NFL's number one run defense go up against the league's top rusher last year, what's it like to, to think about having some practices where you can go after Derrick Henry? I like it, man. You know, uh, the biggest thing going <clears throat> into this next year is how do we turn the page? You know, last year's Super Bowl is over with. How do we get better? And how do, you know, we take that next step? And um, going against Tennessee Titans, I feel like it's one of the best opportunities. Like you said, topping the rush, and we hold our rush defense to the highest, you know, standard. So uh, getting that practice before the season really kicks off, I feel like iron sharpens iron. Next, we'll go to Rick Stroud. <laughs> hey, in some ways, are these joint practices useful in that you can be in certain situations, you get one-on-one -on -one rush drills, all of that, as opposed to a preseason game where you might not get, you know, certain looks and, and things? I will say it's pros and cons in both. <clears throat> some things you do in a joint practice is very unrealistic for what you'll get in the game. But as far as the fundamental part, it's great because now that you can teach technique, but you're not using your own players. Sometimes you can get into this thing where you're seeing each other so much that you know each other's tendencies. And then when you see somebody else, you have to play your technique on it. So I like that as far as the pros, uh, doing a pod and half line, you know, your scoops and doubles and things like that. But sometimes it's unrealistic, <laughs> so it can go hand in hand. You've obviously been a teammate now of Indomitian Sue for a minute. At this stage of his career, what what do you what do you glean from him? What do you take from how he's been able to maintain his level of play all these years? Just like what you said, just maintaining. Uh, I ask him all the time, how are you able to continue to come back and put your best foot forward? And just him being a professional and, and telling me what I need to do for my body, my maintenance, uh, food regimen things like that so I can optimize, you know, myself. And he's just a vet. He's a great guy. He's a professional every time he comes in the building. And he's, he's an open book. If you ask him a question, he'll answer it. Next, we'll go to Kevin O'Donnell. Just talking with B.A., he said you put on 20 pounds uh, maybe since he arrived. How, how long did it take you to put on those pounds? And, uh, and what has it done for your game? You want me to be honest how long it took me to put on 20 pounds? It was like I had to do some some crazy things. It really took me like two and a half, three weeks to put on 20 pounds. It sounds crazy, but <laughs> I had to do it in a uh, fast time and get used to moving with it. What it did to my game, it, it made me more stout. Like It was a lot of things I was able to do coming into the league. I was very explosive. But all it takes is somebody to ping me, I'm out of there. But, <laughs> but now I'm able to sit down on my double team play my scoops, convert the pass. So it's did a lot of things for my run and pass. But last year you were uh, you were telling me uh, and you were just learning to, learning to uh, get to know Tom Brady, but you didn't hold back. You uh, you did some trash talking last training camp. How is your <laughs> how's your relationship changed with him if at all? Oh, oh yes, I have to. I mean, Tom was out there every day and I was expect the best from him and the most from him. So every day I trying to find a way to, you know, pick at him. I was getting on the day about, you know, I'm, I'm keep it real private. What happened in house is in house, but I was talking trash today. Next we'll go to Joey Knight. You've got some guys up front there who were in their mid thirties playing at a Super Bowl level. How much is that? You, you know, the demands of your position. How much that, does that astound you to see guys like Sue and McClendon, continue to play like that at their age? I'm telling you, it is, I don't know. It's really no words for it. Every day I come in and I honestly remind them how blessed they are and how much, you know, they motivate me to do what I do. Cause I'm like, bro, Steve doesn't look like he's that far in his career. When you see him move, when you see him, you know, do certain things the same as Sue and it's just, so crazy and I just ask him all the time like what do you do to continue to play that young and just to have them in our room and you know just to kind of pick their brains at certain things it's awesome hopefully I'm able to do what they do next we'll go to Tom Krasnicki listen you've been around for a couple of years so you had a point in training camp you're like it's too hot we've already had a preseason game let's start the regular season already let's get Dallas in here are you there already no not really I'm not at all I'm always eager to start the season but I know that there's days like this for a reason. There's still things that we have to master, the thing that we need to get better at before we roll into Dallas. Are we who we want to be right now? No. We have strides that we need to make. So I take every day, you know, 
I optimize every day. I, I treat it new. And what can I get better at? You never, you know, stay the same. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. How much preseason time do you really need to get yourself mentally and physically like sharp and ready to go? I'd say, hmm, honestly, two and a half, three weeks. Just it's not only getting the playbook, now it's the execution. execution. Then when you get the execution part, now you have to learn who you're playing with, your personnel. Certain guys do certain things and they do it well. So I feel like all those take, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. So a couple of weeks to get all that gelling and then you can roll into the season. Next we'll go to Steve Isbitt. Steve, I can't see you, Steve. Oh, I am so ugly. You don't want to see me, man. <laughs> hey, I'm not sure with, with all the starters back and so many other players back, uh, does anything feel different about the team this year? Is there any kind of different vibe or is it just the same old, same old? No, nah, there is a big difference, uh, especially on the defense. I don't really get to associate with the offense a lot. You know, they do their own things as far as meetings, but there's a level of expectation from ourselves. Uh, there's something that we want to do this year to be very special. I'm going to keep it under wraps because it's something that we're still trying to focus on in-house. But it's just a sense of urgency. You know, people know what pressures it's going to be on us being the Super Bowl contenders and champs. And just coming into the season, we got high expectations. And I just really hope that we go out there and do what we, you know, set to do. Next, we'll go to J.C. Allen. Just as a veteran, you know, on this team and in the scheme, what's it been like stepping into that, like, mentor or leadership teaching role with the young guys on the team? I mean, it's been great. It's crazy. It's something that I feel like I've done. I've always been vocal. If I feel like you can do something better, you know, I'm going to step forward and say it. And the same thing, if you see me slacking or you see I can, you know, be a better player or a better person or a better teammate, let me know. So it, I feel like it really hasn't been a difference. I'm more comfortable with what I'm doing because, of course, I've been in the scheme a lot longer. But as far as, like, helping and coaching, I've always done that. And who of the young guys have really, like, stood out to you? As far as on the D-line or just period? D-line, uh, both, D-line and period. Uh, you got some great guys. You got young guys like um, Benny. You got Khalil. You got, uh, what's my other guy, Kobe. You got young guys like uh, Hagen of safeties. Uh, the wide receiver, number one. Some guys is really out there, you know, putting some great film out there, and I, I love seeing them work. Number nine, oh, my gosh. He's <laughs> electrifying. Sometimes I wonder, I could have went first round, and now I see him do some things. I'm like, nah, I couldn't have went. <laughs> 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 so uh, it's just great to see guys like that, uh, true to form, and knowing that they can come here and contribute. And those one-on-one -on -one battles, I've heard you've been talking a lot of trash on them, how those have been going. What does that really – you know, do for a defensive line to start winning those? How does that get your confidence going? That's uh, all it time? does. It, it just toots my horn. It just let me know when I go in the game, I can do my thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> all right, last question will come from Kevin O'Donnell. What did winning the Super Bowl do for your offseason? What was the highlight? And were you able to find an endorsement deal for nachos yet? Oh, man, I'm still looking on that. You know, I didn't get uh, any off-season deals. I got a couple of uh, places that want me to appear, but I'm still looking for that nacho deal. So hopefully when we get this third Super Bowl, it's just a no-brainer, unanimous decision. <laughs> Dorito, I'm what looking was your, out for you. And what was your highlight uh, during the off-season, being a Super Bowl champ? Uh, to be honest, my highlight, my baby girl, Halo. She came, it was just like the stars was aligning this year. I won the Super Bowl and then she came and now me and my wife have a beautiful daughter. I love you, boo.